We're good. Should I turn the gain up a little bit or? No, I think you're going to be good because you usually get louder. Yeah, I'm getting excited. <laughs> Hey everybody, Kevin O'Connell here with another episode of the Niche Movement Podcast, episode 15. Have a really interesting and amazing guest that we met through the WeWork system, Andrew Gasson. He's a product manager at Pivotal Labs. And you ask probably what is Pivotal Labs and what is a product manager? You gotta tune in to find out. We really talk not only about tech and startup world, but how Andrew kind of navigated going to three different colleges, being a scholar, D1 athlete, and then now kind of figuring out what's the lifestyle he wants to live in his mid-20s and the lifestyle you can live. So we talk about workforce and where that's going, how to, you know, if you're 20 to 25 years old, how to get out there and network. One of the other things I'm really excited to share through the niche movement is starting April 4th, we are launching Snapchat guest stories. We are launching our, our Snapchat where you, anybody that you know that loves what they're doing or has a very unique job at a unique place can tell your story through our Snapchat channel and really kind of paint a picture for those that are in their early 20s. Maybe people that are older, figure out what is it like to work on the Dr. Oz set? What is it like to work for a startup here in DC? And so we have all these different people Monday through Friday taking it over. I'd really encourage you if you wanna be on that or even tune in, it's at Niche Movement. And you can also email me or ping us and we will certainly get you on the list to take over our account. But seriously, enjoy this episode. Andrew's a great guest and by all means, please reach out to him via LinkedIn or Twitter. Enjoy. Hey everybody, Kevin O'Connell here with the Niche Movement Podcast, back for another amazing episode with my guest Andrew Gasson from Pivotal Labs. And before I start out talking about who Andrew is and how we met, um, the last, so it's almost end of March, I've been battling a cold, Hannah's now sick, that's why Dan's probably not here, he's, he's avoiding the plague that's going around WeWork. But it's been a very busy uh, up and down month. But one of the things that I just got into, and I really don't have time to read anymore, is I want to share this book because he's a huge fan of mine, and I have to give a shout out, and I don't know if you know Gary Vaynerchuk. So um, I bought a handful of these books, and again, I said I haven't had time to read, and I'll share it up here. Um, it's Ask Gary V. If you haven't looked up his show on YouTube, Ask Gary V. Show, he's up to like 180 episodes where he's answering questions on entrepreneurship, marketing, social media, life, parenting, business. Um, he's been somebody that I've had a chance to meet a couple times. He actually was on the Niche Movement blog um, about two or three years ago. We interviewed him and he's in our book. But I have to give him a shout because his book came out. We are, we are light years apart on our, on our work and our life. But um, I started listening to his audio book and the amazing thing is I started reading the first chapter of this book. The audio book and this are completely different because he recorded the audio book literally 30 days ago and the audiobook is like real time answers to the questions and he even says like, wow, I'm gonna change my answer based on what was written in the book three mm -hmm. months ago. Um, so Ask Gary Vee, one entrepreneur's take on leadership, social media, and self-awareness. Highly recommend this book and again, we're all about sharing resources. So at any time, Andrew, you wanna share a resource, website, blog that come, you've come across, by all means, we'll sure. get into that. Um, so I'd like to first start out by kind of saying how we meet our guests and Andrew, you are our second guest. And really it was, we, we decided to bring back the podcast. We were in 12th floor. Mm -hmm. We were in the big glass, glass uh, conference rooms. And I had the last minute idea, like, let me just throw up like a recording, please quiet sign. And then I put like, hey, by the way, like, anybody walking by would want to be on our podcast, like email me. And this is kind of that serendipity of like one is better than zero. And we accidentally left the sign up Later that night, I got an email at like eight o'clock from Andrew, who works at Pivotal Labs, which we'll get into what Pivotal Labs is. Long story short, it's through email and then through then attending some of their lunch and learns and then him coming by one of our podcasts. We're like, wow, like we should have you on. And so that's why you're here. Um, I'm here because I said it in the, uh, the first episode with Vin, is I like telling stories. I like sharing advice, connecting people and telling stories, whether that's on the social media digital side or through mediums like this, through the book, um, because I really think it's important to help people find their niche or their right. passion. So I'm curious, why are you here aside from you deciding to email me and you're now in the hot seat? Uh, so uh, that night, actually, the night that I emailed you, mm -hmm. uh, Pivotal Labs is doing what we call our board game night. Okay. So we have like, we provide dinner and all that. And I'm terrible at board games, so I'm just wandering around. Yeah. And uh, so my wife's doing board game night, and they're all eating, and I'm wandering around, and I see the I see the notice on the. So we just need one person to see it. Yep, yeah. and it worked, right? Yeah. Uh, and I had actually a couple of weeks prior had just purchased this microphone, uh, yeah, the silver yeah. version, okay. because I was thinking, hmm, 
I might be interested in like doing a podcast or cool. something. I like talking. Cool. Sometimes people listen to me. Maybe yeah. this makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I realized yeah. it's a lot. Like there's a mental blocker that once you get the microphone and plug it in, it's like now I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Stage just, right. You know these guys do they they do podcasts. Yeah. You know I'm gonna see what they're all about and uh, um, you know felt the urge to reach out. Didn't realize that you were actually based in the building with yeah. us here cool. and, and uh, yeah you just kind of rolled from there. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, and for anybody out there, that's kind of my big mentality. I grew up very shy and introverted, and at times I still am, but. It's that kind of be on the offense, putting yourself out there. And it could be a sign, it could be a tweet, it could just be like, maybe we could have stumbled into each other a month yep. from now. Um, but it's meeting cool people that are doing really cool things and um, getting you here to, to actually talk about finer niche and, and kind of the journey you're on. So Andrew, you were at Pivotal Labs. Give me like a quick 60 to 90 second, like what is Pivotal Labs? Because sure. I know you've shared it with me, but to, to people listening and watching out there. So our the, the mission of Pivotal Labs, like the stated marketing mission sure. of Pivotal Labs is to transform the way the world builds software. Okay. And that's like very lofty, it's very fluffy, yeah. uh, but we're, we're a consulting firm um, cool. and we have very strong opinions about how to build good stuff. Uh, our opinions are so strong that when we work with clients, we make them come to us and we wow. work with them in our space. So they leave there very educated and, and very, yeah. like they, they have their hands dirty, they know right. what they're doing. Exactly right. Yeah. And it's more about empowering them to go do, you know, the teach a man to fish yeah. type thing yeah. as opposed to it. we'll build it and then you can leave with it. We'd yeah. rather have them understand the process so that yeah. they can be successful and they leave. Yeah. Very cool. And so what is your role and what does a typical day look like? Sure. Um, so I'm a product manager. Okay. Um, don't, the, the word manager probably shouldn't even be included okay. in there. Like we, we don't, we're not in charge of anything. Uh, basically I'm the translator between here's what your users need and developers, here's what we need to build. Okay. Um, so a typical day for me is uh, as a consultant, I'm working with another product manager from our client trying okay. to teach them how to do what they're doing okay. uh, how to teach them to do what i'm doing okay. uh, and then basically i'm like the facilitator if there's roadblocks my job is to get them out of the way gotcha. before the team so remove them. friction yep okay yeah this this as smooth uh, of an experience for our developers yeah. as possible that means i did a good job yeah so I so for to give some context uh, we're here in the in the Arlington Crystal City we work and they have like a compound. Pivotal Labs has a compound of about four or five offices of like 10 people offices. You even have your own private office for your own phone booth. Yeah. So tell me, um, are they based in DC or like where are they based? And I, you alluded to me when I first met you some of the clients that you've worked with, if you can or cannot mm -hmm. talk about it. But, but like, so when you say you make stuff, like what is that? Is sure. It, is it analytics? Is it, is it software? Is it UI, UX? Yes, is the, is the answer. We, we do all of that. Um, so we're actually based in Palo Alto. Okay. Uh, uh, the DC office, I think, was the 17th global wow, office. That's big. Okay. So yeah, we've got about 2,000 employees. Wow. Um, DC is one of the one of the babies, um, and we're actually moving in, by the end of this year into our permanent location in downtown DC, which is you know for context, 20,000 square feet sure. as opposed to the handful of rooms we have here. Yeah. So we're used to being in a lot bigger environments than where we are currently. Yeah. So. So Andrew, when I met him, told me he came up from Florida. So I'm curious, um, talk me, you, you could go back as far as high school, college, sure. et cetera, but how did you get to, you know, today is March, uh, let's say March 24, 2016. So take me like how you got to Pivotal Labs and, and the DC and why you transitioned. I'm really like, what, what's your, what's your backstory look like? So I, I like to tell people that it's like as traditional <laughs> as it could possibly be. I was a scholarship athlete at the University of Oklahoma oh, no uh, out of high school. Um, I left the University of Oklahoma, transferred to Ohio State, where I was Wisconsin the Ohio State. State. Yeah, the okay. Ohio State. So I know we have Midwest fans listening. Yeah. Okay. Um, I ended up uh, tearing my hamstring, had to transfer back to a smaller school in Missouri. So uh, three years, three different universities. What sport? Uh, I played uh, football and ran track. Okay. So um, ended up graduating with a business degree and had a bunch of physics courses yeah. and realized that the amount of money that I had spent on college mm -hmm. uh, and the degree that I had wasn't going to line up salary wise. Okay. So the most logical thing to do was to go into more debt to get a different job. <laughs> um, once you're going, just keep yeah. on going. Yeah. So at that point, I probably had $85,000 oh, wow. in debt. Uh, Out-of-state tuition in Ohio, very expensive. Yeah. Um, 
tr uh, went to the University of Central Florida for a graduate program. I yeah. actually have a master's degree in video game design. That's um, awesome. From as of this year, a couple weeks ago, we were named the number one grad program in the world for no way. yeah for video game design. Wow. Um, Worked at EA Sports for about eight months before I realized I hated it and it wasn't f going to be financially sustainable. Sure. Yeah. Um, got into education technology. Okay. Uh, worked at a startup that was uh, saved through acquisition. We were about to fail. Okay. Um, we were acquired by another startup, Silicon Valley based. Uh, our co-founder was the co-founder of Zynga. Okay. So and where was this located at the time? No, we were in Orlando at this time. Okay. So yeah. already in Florida. Yeah, still, still in Orlando. After I graduated uh, from UCF, I yeah. just stayed there. Yeah. Um, where I met my wife cool. and everything. So, cool. um, second startup that I was at uh, also went under, and yeah. I was like, ah, oh, man, you know, I need jobs. Sure. Yeah. I need money. Yeah. Um, and Orlando is not really a hot market for for the type of work that I do. So I ended up looking around and. I had uh, four job offers in four different cities: uh, Austin, New York, DC, the hot, and, hot spots. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and uh, ended up picking labs uh, here in DC. So moved up here. Wife's with me. Her family lives nearby, so it just kind of worked out for us. That's awesome. So. Um, I'm very intrigued in the startup world, even though I'm on the creative content mm -hmm. side, I'm not so much on the analytic or UX sure. side. Um, but you know, I don't say to millennials or young professionals or Gen Y, like you got to go into entrepreneurship, but I do think that being exposed to something in the startup field at some point in your twenties, cause you have to wear a lot of hats. You get to see what you saw, you know, the good, yeah. the bad, the ups and downs. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. So you, you were with two stars prior to Pivotal. Give, give me like size and, and like kind of the scope of that business. Like, you know, we're, we're really like one and three, three and a half people, you know, mm -hmm. Hannah's an intern, Dan's an intern. We have Manny out of Chicago who's part-time, but like talk to me about like, you know, that's a startup, but you said Pivotal's 2000 people. I'm sure that's still a startup, right? So talk to me about the sizes of each three of the companies. So, so the, I think the, the important thing when you use the term startup, when I use the yeah. term startup, yeah. it's like, uh, it's a group of people or a person that's looking for like their repeatable business model, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so size, size in my mind doesn't come in too much of, of a factor. Mm -hmm. So the first startup I worked at, we had we started at like twenty people, and towards the end yeah. we were down to seven. Uh, the second startup we started at like sixty people, and then we got down to zero. Wow. <laughs> um, nice. So both of them failed for the same reason; they didn't yeah. find their sustainable, yeah. repeatable the cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think one of the big takeaways for me in startup, and, and I would absolutely go back into startup world, um, is that you've got to be intentional about everything that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So as a person, I found yeah. that you know, in my pursuits, you know, that's like a big lesson for me. Is yeah. like, you know, I'm not going to accidentally become yeah. uh, noticed or accidentally become good at something. Right? There's a lot of very intentional things you've got to do. Okay. Uh, to make that happen. So, like, what would that? What would those be? Or if you were sitting here with, um, you know, Hannah's in college right now, what would you tell somebody that's 20 to 25 years old thinking about getting into the startup field or maybe doing their own startup? Uh, network. That's like okay. the one of my one of my biggest things, and, and I struggle yeah. with it. But I have a mentor um, that we work together at, at yeah. these startups, yeah. and he. He has uh, the biggest, like most consistent, most reliable network of anybody I've ever met. And the way he does it, and it's very simple, and yeah. it doesn't it doesn't sound genuine, but it really is. Okay. Is he'll meet somebody, sure. and that night uh, he'll put a calendar invite for like four months or six months out. Says, hey, check in on so and so, ask them about X Y Z, wow. and it's just like. A little ping yeah. says, "Hey, you know, just thinking about you the other day. Wanted to see yeah. how you're doing. By the way, yeah. how's you know Eric doing?" That's football? that's such an amazing tip. Um, I do a mastermind call with three other entrepreneurs every Friday, and we always talk about this. And I'm learning about 75% of the business that I've had a chance to you know been fortunate enough to do for people is 75% has been through somebody knows somebody, or yeah. or like I've been at the right place, right time, and so I've really you know, utilize that whole network marketing philosophy that it's kind of like put yourself out there, get to know people um, and, and some things might come your way. So we talk about like, how do you stay in touch with that many people? And right now for me, as we're kind of growing and my network is growing, uh, one of the tools they've recommended is, uh, I think it's Contactually. And basically it, it imports your contacts 
And then you can start kind of creating those pings of like, hey, haven't talked to so-and-so, haven't talked to Andrew in 60 days, or just, it kind of pings you instead of setting those manual calendar reminders. But I've, I've used that tactic here there, but nothing uh, formal or consistent, I guess you would say. But that's a really good tip. So, okay. And Go it, ahead. It, it, become, it becomes really interesting to me as somebody who just finished this job hunting yeah. nightmare yeah. Yeah. Um, as like of all the the jobs that I applied to, if I didn't have a contact there, I didn't get a, I didn't get contacted back, right? Sure. You, know, you just you you're shooting out into the the void of yeah. you know keeping fingers crossed. So, what, what advice would you offer to somebody job searching? It's like you, all right, you, you said that advice. How do how does somebody get their foot in the door? Whether they're just graduating college or they're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. So you know, LinkedIn has that tool of like you know your third degree connections mm -hmm. with people. Um, I've I, I use that like I when I was job hunting I paid for the LinkedIn premium yeah. and I would you know say hey you know so and so I'm trying to yeah. get in touch here what do yeah. you know yeah. um, I would also reach out directly to the people who I knew had yeah. good networks yeah. and said hey you know me I'm looking for work what's well, good you know if you hear anything yeah. think of me um, it was, was really interesting was that there's a couple paid services that companies use that are they're basically saying hey um, we trust you guys okay. to find us good candidates. Okay. Um, so I, that's actually how I found Pivotal was okay. through one of these uh, organizations called Underdog. Okay, that's yeah. great. Is that like Angel List? I know there's a bunch out there. Um, you know, it's. I would say it's, it's kind of comparable, but obviously more okay. focused on you know the job. So company. Underdog right. is one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Under uh, I think Hired.com operates yeah. in a similar okay. way. Cool. So what have you, um, how long have you been with Pivotal then? September 14th was my first day. Okay, so oh. just about six, seven months? Yep. Um, so what have you learned, and I know you use the word manager, mm -hmm. what have you learned about yourself and what have you also observed? Because I see a lot of your employees, like they're probably younger than us and they're playing ping pong upstairs and they're also working very hard. What's something you've learned by working from Pivotal and working in your third startup as well as what skill sets that these um, young professionals either have, don't have, or that you would like to see them develop? So I think uh, there, there's a lot of a lot of parts there, yeah. um, but one of the things that Pivotal really preaches is sustainable pace, and yeah. this is an interesting topic. So sustainable. So is that like work-life balance or sustainable pace, like output? Or? Um, I I, th I think it's a combination of both. Okay. Um, so. so you know, you, you use the term like rocket fuel where you can, yeah. like you, you're you super pumped about something and you're gonna do it really, really awesome and you're gonna work hard yeah. and then you run out of gas. You know? gotcha. And yeah. um, you know, we, that's the opposite of what we wanna do. So you don't want like jobs to get monotonous or people to get tedious or to kind of get just right. so, so, so overworked. So yeah. we have, a lot of our employees have like timers on their machines that actually lock their computers for really? 15 minutes every couple hours. So that's say, why they come up and play yeah. ping pong. Exactly okay. right. Yeah. Wow. And we don't start until 9.06 every morning, and we, at six o'clock, everybody leaves. Like, it's just like six o'clock, nobody's done, nobody's working anymore. Really? Yep. Wow. And where does that stem from? Because that, I think, you know, whether you're a five person, a hundred person, maybe like you're a 2,000 person shop, multiple 17 cities, where does that leadership and where does that culture come from? So, uh, Pivotal Lab started as, you know, a group of people yeah. that said, "Hey, I think there's a better way to build stuff," sure. and you know they they kept in mind that we are people. As yeah. if we're going to help teach other people, they are people too, yeah. and people have fears and hopes and dreams yeah. and things that they want to do outside of work. Yeah. And um, you know, our CEO actually right now is on paternity leave. He's taking like the full pivotal allotted paternity yeah. leave. Um, so I mean, that's something. It comes from the leadership, and it's yeah. been like that throughout nobody expects you you, wow. you I rarely get emails after six o'clock and if I do it's from some of our West Coast offices really? that are actually still working and so how do you because um, you you work with clients so how do you or how does Pivotal kind of because we're in the client service industry mm -hmm. as well um, how does that kind of cut off though like say the client like is it client comes first or is that do they kind of know like hey between you know the nine to six those those nine to ten hours of work day like don't expect to hear from us or like where's that expectation start or? Uh, so it, it's part it's part of our selling point um, so before a client you know sits in one of our chairs yeah. like they already have this expectation of this is how we work wow. and we do it because it works yeah. if it didn't work we yeah. wouldn't do it yeah. Um, yeah so that's that's one of the takeaways that we try to push like if a client asks us to stay an extra 30 yeah. minutes we're like mm, yeah no we're not gonna do that yeah 
Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, I give kudos to, to what you guys are doing to that kind of mindset. That's very tough. Um, so let's get into like Andrew and who you are because we were talking about, you know, you're still trying to figure it out and you just like to be busy and to keep moving forward. Uh, I know you have potentialthings.com, which is your blog. Um, so feel free to go in any of that direction, whether it's potential things that, that recent blog post you were about like rearranging your day and created uninter uninterrupted work, but like, what does that blog sit there for? Like, or like, what are you, what are you looking to do in a couple of years? That's, a, that's such a tough question for me. And part of what I was, I picked the name potential things. So I have this problem where I have <laughs> uh, a million things that I want to do or think that I want yeah. to do. I will start a handful of them and then they just kind of die on the vine. Mm -hmm. I lose interest, I go into something else. Yeah. Um, so my one of my goals for this year was to, to take all of those potential things and turn them into real things. Cool, start, I love that. Start like one at a time. Um, so mentioned I have a, my background in video game design. I'm actually working with somebody that uh, I met on the internet and we have uh, uh, our first mobile games about to be released in a couple months wow. um, once we passed all the certifications sure. and stuff. But yeah. like that's an example of something that, that I've always wanted to do um, and have never like crossed the finish line. So having a podcast is something else. I have all the equipment, yeah. I have all of the topics, yeah. I've just never actually done it sure. for whatever reason that yeah. is yeah. and uh, you know so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, like I don't want to use the term self-discovery but I'm going to use the term self-discovery yeah. that I'm trying to figure out here it's like yeah. what is it that I actually like doing yeah. you know? yeah. and I found that most of my uh, stresses have revolved around like well I want to do X so that I can make money and sure. that as a driver has not been successful for yeah. me. Yeah, I think it takes time to create any type of traction or, or mm -hmm. brand, whether it's personally or, or, or as an organization or a company. And that's one of the things I think we're going through right now is we're doing really good work for the clients that we've done work for on the digital side and the career side. But it's so very few clients that, you know, we've gotten word of mouth, but it's, it's just how can you echo that? And how can right. you get it out there? Um, I like what you said about self-discovery. We just, I, th I think it's in the book, we just uh, launched an e-course. and. One of the sections is on self-discovery. It's kind of like this 30-day challenge. Like, there's two options. Do one of them. You'll figure out what you don't like or what you do right. like. And that was one of the first opening quotes in our book is uh, one of our editors. She kind of said, like, uh, she actually graduated from American University, too, which is where Hannah goes. And she said, I realize what I, 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 realize what I uh, like to do by doing the things I don't like. Like, basically just doing mm -hmm. more things and be like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Or, I, you know. And so I think um, you're probably spending, you know, extra time on the weekends or at night coming up with this stuff. It's probably, you know, that self-discovery. So. And, and it's it's something that's interesting because, like, there's uh, growing up, I was I was the first one in my family to go to college, okay. um, which is why I did college so wrong. Right? <laughs> um, but first one in my family to go to college, and it was kind of viewed as like this holy grail. You go to college, you get the good job, yeah. then you're living, right? Yeah. Life is yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and I'm finding that to not be super true, yeah. right? Because now at this point, um, I realize that I am spending nine hours of my day here doing my my job. Yep. Um, but that's just a part of everything yeah. that it yeah. is that I that I'm interested in. Yeah. Um, like my father is a, a highway patrolman. Okay. So anybody who refers to my father refers to him by his career. Sure. And part of what I'm going through right now is like this this feeling of. You know, we're all so much more than yeah. that. Yeah. You know, why is yeah. it that that's what we get referred to? Yeah, or defined um, by. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's interesting for me because how do how do you how do you break break apart such that you're viewed as you know you're viewed as Andrew and everything that means as yeah. opposed to just yeah that's the guy who's a product manager for Pivotal Labs. You know? Yeah, yeah. Where where do you see? the workforce going, kind of what you just alluded to, like yeah. you're not defined by your nine to five or your, your seven to 12, like, um, but like you're not defined by it. And I think you can be fulfilled in different ways. So like, where do you see the workforce going? So I had a, one of my mentors asked me this question a while ago and, and it, it, this is probably what triggered my, yeah. my identity crisis was Andrew, when are you going to stop uh, getting paid for what you do and start getting paid for what you know. Wow. And, you know, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, 
it's an interesting question for all of us because like the doers uh, for as fair or as not fair as it may be there's like an, an earning cap on yeah. that and it's defined by either uh, like tangible output mm -hmm. or time yeah right yeah um, but uh, you know the knowledge that you have and everybody has specialties everybody yeah. has things that they know yeah. um, that that can be there there can potentially be no limit on sure. on what that ceiling looks like yeah. so I think there's I think there's an opportunity for everybody to have like not just the things that they're interested in but the things they are good at yeah. as like multiple revenue streams of, yeah. aside from or instead of mm -hmm. the single chunk yeah. of I do this for nine yeah. hours yeah. So two things I'm observing, and whether um, your employer supports or not, but they're almost allowing you indirectly to almost have a side hustle or to do something outside of your job because you really have that 9.06 to 6 o'clock work and where you can go home from 7 to midnight or on the weekends. Like It sounds like you have a pretty good work-life balance where you could do that if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or you could kick it and just relax. But um, the other thing I'm observing, I had this conversation with my buddy John who is uh, he was in mechanical engineering. Now he works for... Uh, Sanska, I think it's he's doing like basically uh, architect commercial commercial contracts like that. But we we're talking about like contractor work, what you just mm -hmm. said, and um, and basically what I I look at the WeWork system here, and I look at that board every now and then, and what I would love to teach somebody that's twenty one coming out of college is imagine if they had access to that board and they were an engineer, or a UI UX, they could almost if they were talented and kind of could brand themselves and get cut through the noise. Imagine instead of taking one part-time or one full-time job, all these people are looking for that help. Like, right. I only have a thousand dollars here, a couple thousand here. They could scoop up six projects in a year and, and they could maybe make, you know, a full-time salary over those six projects, 12 projects and work on their own terms. Yep. Um, because I see it, like I can't afford to hire full-time staff right now, um, but you can make up, you know, you know, Hannah, you probably work 15 hours a week. I know you're still in college, but you could balance that with a couple other gigs. And I think, I wish there was a way to kind of connect those two pieces together. It's people that aren't ready to hire full time, um, but have contracted work or projects. Right. Um, so so that's, that's a very interesting thought. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're going to see a lot of evolution in the coming years of how how those connections get made. Yeah. I stumbled upon something very interesting yesterday, which is they call themselves the first uh, team hiring platform. So let's okay. say the three of us are, you know, we work very well together. We have proven results together. Mm -hmm. um, companies could actually hire the three of us to full-time positions, but they hire the team itself. So mm -hmm. uh, they list Zenefits as one of their one of their providers. Wow. So we've got a small web dev shop. We make great stuff. Uh, Zenefit says we want the three of you because yeah. you do good stuff and we want to keep you together so we're just going to bring all of you on board wow um, and that's like contractor like for X amount of time no they're, 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 they're actually doing full time behind the whole. full time things wow. yeah. um, so I think I think there, you're going to see some innovation yeah. in that area there yeah. I think the other thing that is going to really change is uh, as technology platforms are going to start to allow us new ways of being able to monetize different aspects of ourselves. If you look at uh, platforms like Patreon, where mm -hmm. like you can you can have your supporters, regardless of how many there are, yeah. can fund you to keep yeah. doing the things that they yeah. that you add value for them. Yeah. Very cool. So we're talking about the workforce and kind of where where we see this going. Kind of to wrap this up, where. We've talked about you know some advice, get a mentor, mm -hmm. the networking. We've talked about under underdog and some other yeah. resources. We've talked about this WeWork system. Um, again, if you had the chance to go back to Ohio State or Oklahoma and, and talk to twenty to twenty two year olds, um, what would be like three pieces of tangible advice? And maybe one person's like Andrew, I'm completely stuck. I don't know what to do. Right. The other person's like, I know exactly. I want to go into <laughs> this. Like, what would you kind of would you tell them to slow down, or like what would you tell them to? Um, I, I think. One thing that I didn't think enough about early on was like the return on investment. Okay. So, and that could be lifestyle, it could be time, it could be financial. Sure. Um, but you look at a lot of these uh, like coding boot camps now, where you yeah. can you can pay fifteen grand, mm -hmm. and like you're you get placed in a job making mm -hmm. engineer salaries. Yeah. It's like, well, boy, that looks pretty good compared to all the debt I incurred yeah. going through college, right? Yeah. 
Um, so depending on what it is that, that you're looking for in your life, you can be, you can make some educated decisions based on, you know, I put in X, what is it that I'm getting out of that? Sure. Um, I think another thing is, is just understanding what the possibilities are. I didn't do enough research on how life could be lived because I have lived the yeah. way my parents lived yeah. for 18 years of That's my life. That's a whole other generation. Yep. Yeah. Completely different. They still have no clue what it is I do on a daily Save basis. Save here, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I try to tell my parents, and they appreciate and support it 100%, but like, my, I don't know if my mom even knew when we moved in, I moved into a new office. Like she, uh, and, and I don't think Hannah sometimes can figure out all the things we're doing. <laughs> I need to do a better job of that. But yeah, it's a generational thing. It, it, and it's it's tough because like those are the people that you look up to for yeah. information and all other yeah. areas of yeah. your life. But they, they're living in a very different world than we are. Yeah. Um, so I think like investigating and seeing how other people are living lives yeah. can help you make educated decisions on where it is you are going to invest mm-hmm. your time, yeah. money, yeah. etc. Yeah. Um, and I think the third thing, uh, the third piece of advice is I would consider, I would call like lifestyle planning. Okay. A lot of people go into career planning. Sure. You know, it's like yeah. I have a career counselor. Yeah. Uh, but I have a friend of mine who just recently moved to Charleston, South Carolina okay. yeah, from, area. from Orlando. Yeah. Um, and he and his wife, what they did is they said, well, what life do we want to have? Mm-hmm. We want to be close to a beach. We want to yeah. have, you know, be in an area that has decent schools. We yeah. want to be in an area that has, like we can have a house with land. Yeah. Um, so what they did is they, they narrowed down locations based on their what they wanted in their lifestyle and then figured out I need to make X amount of dollars to be out there yeah. and yeah. and kind of approach their careers from that perspective. So, which to me is just like completely spits in the face of the traditional sure. make as much money as you can mm-hmm. and you know, step yeah. on people in order to get yeah. those promotions. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, once you yeah. are living the way you yeah. want, then why does it matter how much extra you're making? Yeah. Um, it's interesting living here in DC and, and some of the people and, and projects and things we've gotten to work on. I've had some great clients, and, but it's interesting because it is a pretty expensive area. I yeah. grew up in New Jersey. Um, basically, what we sold our house for, I think, is what we have a small two bedroom townhouse for. So, when you talk about lifestyle, you got to take that into consideration. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm sure you and I are a little bit older, but it's, it's interesting when you do have that partner or somebody mm-hmm. that can help when you want to take a pivot or move or whatever. And um, for me, you know, I just shared this is I did my taxes for the first full year of this, which was a whole nother mess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I realized I basically brought in 30% more of revenue, what my base salary at Rutgers University was two years ago. But I also then took 30% pay home because I invested that other 60 or, or that difference back into office space, mm-hmm. you know, uh, camera equipment, staff, and, and marketing. and um, But I've never been happier. I've right. never been happier because I can make the lifestyle I want. And um, it's also tough. I think that's what you trade in. Um, but I think that's interesting, lifestyle planning versus so career So we planning. went from a 3,600 square foot yeah. home yeah. on half acre land to a 700 square foot apartment yeah. Yeah. You know, in an apartment yeah. complex. And you know, we're... we're we are in that mode where we're like, oh, all those things we yeah. thought we really needed, yeah. I'm not sure if we do. Because now we have, you know, being here in Arlington, we have easy access to great restaurants. There's a lot of activities in the area. So the life is very different. Yeah. And uh, if I would have if I would have thought about it and been a little bit more intentional about it, I, I think we would have maybe been in a position where, yeah. where you could do what we had before and what yeah. we are experiencing now. Yeah. Cool. Um, so where can people connect with you personally, Andrew, you know, uh, feel free to share your blog, Twitter handle, anything like that, um, or any help you're looking for. Sure. So I'm horrible at Twitter. <laughs> I'm so bad at Twitter. I, we just followed um, you before. I, I, I have, I have Twitter, uh, that potential things. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've never successfully used it. Um, but that's there. So maybe if people are using it, I would use it. And your blog is um, potentialthings.com. Yep. Uh, and I also have Medium that I'm on. Yeah, it's uh, a great platform. Um, using that, um, very interested. I see a lot of people referencing Gary on yeah. uh, on Medium. Yeah. Um, but actually, uh, LinkedIn is probably the most reliable yeah. way cool. to get a hold of me. You know, find me on LinkedIn, and I respond pretty quickly to that. Cool. After our last startup failed, I was you know kind of the the person who helped everybody else find jobs. Oh, so good for you. LinkedIn was how how I'm used to communicating. That's now. cool. 
So I'm sure Andrew and I will connect on LinkedIn. So anyone that follows me, I'm sure you can second, third party connection to Andrew. And your last name is G-A-S-S-E-N. That's it. Gasson. Um, and then Pivotal Labs. If if somebody knows somebody that's listening or, or is somebody that's like, hey, I am a, I'm a UX, UI or analytic person or, uh, you know, are, are are they hiring or how would you get a foot in the door at Pivotal? Uh, if you'd mind sharing that. Sure, uh, again, you reach out to me, uh, yeah. but we have all positions listed on our website. And what are some typical positions or things uh, that you guys look for? We have product managers, data scientists, sales recruiters, we have our own recruiting team, yeah. um, uh, designers, engineers, like pretty much anything around the yeah. world of software we have. I think right now we actually have a position in San Francisco open for uh, director of happiness, which is, you know. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's that's a pretty sweet gig to, to get into. Um, and look, so I'm, cause I've seen these at like uh, Buffer and some other <laughs> startups, but I'm assuming that's kind of like head of culture and yeah. creating these happy hours and these right. game nights and kind of making sure you're living what you're stating. Exactly. Right? And yeah. it's being very intentional about it. You know, oh. you can say, yes, we have good culture, but if you're yeah. not intentional about it, then yeah. it falls apart. So that person is, is there for that. Very cool. Um, anything else you want to share? Um, I think. I, I would just encourage everybody to like innovate in all areas of their lives and think about you know what is it that what is it that I like doing what is it that I'm good at doing and what is it that I can that I do that other people could find value in and you'll be very surprised at where that looks uh, how that looks compared to what you actually spend all your time doing during the day yeah. and yeah. if those don't line up maybe there's like yeah. a, an evaluation that you can yeah. do to make them line up. And do you think now in, in, in almost halfway through 2016, do you think that it's easier now than it was 5, 10, 30 years ago to, to do that and to kind of look at that? So I think it's easier to do it. I yeah. think it's harder to filter out all of the, you use the term, you know, get through the noise. I think yeah. if you, I think it's harder to filter out the noise yeah. now. Uh, you see all of the top 10 ways to yeah. guarantee yeah. life success. Yeah. You know, all well, it's that methods. external noise. And then I've dealt a lot with internal yeah. noise of the confidence and the gremlins. Exactly. And internal. I'm pointing to my head right now, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's easier than ever to do it, but it might be harder than ever to actually decide to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Well, I think that's a great note to end on. Andrew, thank you so much. I'm glad we bumped into each other. Yeah, it was and, fun. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure when you, when you get your podcast going, <laughs> uh, we will get your first guest, and I'd be more than happy to sit in as well. So, cool. Awesome. Thanks a lot, thank man. Thank you. Everybody out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we covered a lot of great things from working at Pivotal Labs to the, what the workforce is going to look like. We have a lot of great things. So thank you guys so much for tuning in.